Welcome back to Dry Hall Homestead. This is Danielle again, and we're in the kitchen making another cheese. Today we're making a Monterey Jack. So I am actually going to use five gallons of raw milk to make this Monterey Jack. So like always, <clears throat> I go by most of the instructions in the 200 Easy Homemade Cheese Recipes book uh, that I have li linked in the description box. But because I am using raw milk, um, my direct, my Ingredients are going to be a little different, so if you are making raw milk cheese, come along and I'll show you how it is done. So we have five gallons in my big stainless steel cheese pot right now. I have already scraped the cream mostly off of this. You really don't need to for Monterey Jack, but I am out of butter. So this is going to be a little bit of a light Monterey Jack cheese, but I am okay with that because butter is important. I have my big um, thermometer, my cheese thermometer, which is linked in the description box below also. And we are slowly, gradually heating this up to 89 degrees. So at 89 degrees, we are going to add our culture. Once we have this at 89 degrees, we are going to add our Mesophilic Backsplash Waves, the culture I'm using today. You can use store-bought. Uh, freeze-dried culture, mesophilic culture. If you were to do a freeze-dried culture, I would uh, use half a teaspoon of that. That would probably work just fine. Half a teaspoon of the mesophilic store-bought freeze-dried culture. For me, I'm using Backsplash Whey, which I have a video all about that that I can link. And I'm going to use uh, three-fourths a cup for this five, five gallons. I'm just going to pour this on top and then we're going to stir it in. And we are at 89 degrees. I turn the heat off. Then I'm going to stir in an up-down fashion like this, incorporating all the way through the, the milk. Okay, once we have this all the way incorporated through the milk, we are going to put the lid on it keep the, temp the temperature the same at 89 degrees. Don't turn the heat on at all. And we are going to set a timer for 45 minutes. This is going to culture or ripen for 45 minutes. Timer has gone off. This has cultured now for 45 minutes. Our next step is to add our rennet. I um, order this off New England Cheese Making Company. I also have some linked on um, Amazon you can buy. Um, this is what I'm using this time, the Canadian Milk Coagulate. This was actually a little bit cheaper, so I bought this off New England Cheese Making Company, but still, if you have Prime and you do uh, you do the Amazon Prime, it's fine too. I mean, it's not that big of a difference. But you're going to dilute it in a quarter cup of water. My water is um, non-chlorinated water for my Berkey, so make sure that you don't have chlorine in your water for the, what you're using. And for this amount, I'm saying about three-fourths a teaspoon. So, I'm gonna measure that out. Okay. I'm not extremely precise on any measurements with cheese. And then pour it on the surface of our milk. And then we're going to stir this up and down just like we did before. Uh, the cheese making books always say not to splash. I don't know why, but I do understand up and down because we want to incorporate it from the top to the bottom. And especially with raw milk that has not been homogenized, you're going to have that cream rise to the top. So you want it to be incorporated all the way through down to the bottom. And we are still at 89 degrees. We have not changed. Now we're going to let this coagulate for 30 minutes. We're going to go ahead and set our timer, put our lid back on. Let me make sure 30, uh, no, 40 minutes. So we are going to let this sit now for 40 minutes and this will become one big solid mass. We'll check for a clean break in 40 minutes. Okay, so it has been the 40 minutes. I just washed my fingers, so I'm going to stick it in, pull it straight up. I see that it's kind of messy. It's not a straight line. It's kind of broke. It's kind of clotty on my finger. I'm going to go ahead and give it about 10 more minutes and try again. Okay, it's been 10 more minutes. Let's 
try again with her finger pull it up oh yeah that's a lot better I'm gonna say good enough good enough we're going to cut curds into this now we are going to cut quarter quarter inch no <laughs> half inch half inch cubes a grid into this we're gonna the curds are hard to get every single curd cut um, the way I try to cut my curds is to go in one direction and make lines and then from the other side I will make them into cubes make a grid um, looking at about a quarter or half inch <clears throat> and then I go on all four sides at a 45 degree angle to try to cut underneath those cubes it is never going to be perfect as a home cheese maker but this does pretty well let these curds firm up for 10 minutes before we start the, the stirring process so put the lid back on we've still not turned that heat on at all it's still 89 degrees 10 minutes to firm up a little bit so they don't just get broken up into mush and then we will be back okay we have let this set now for the 10 minutes they have firmed up quite a bit we are going to start stirring we have a stirring process of 40 minutes we're going to stir very gently in the beginning continuing to stir this whole 40 minutes while we are heating it to 100 degrees and we want it to take the whole time to get to 100 degrees so very gradually heating it up so that it takes the full 40 minutes stirring gently especially at first so you don't break up all the curds and then um, after that we will come back so I'm going to go ahead and set my timer. This is when I usually get a big st a stool and listen to audiobook or podcast. I love Crime Weekly or Stephanie Har Harlow. So I will begin. Let me turn my stove on. So we're right at 89 still. So I'm going to go at like medium low, low medium and gently stir. And I will bring you back when we are a little bit closer to the end of our 40 minutes. If you see any big chunks that are not broken up, now would be the time just to take your take your uh, spatula and break it up. Okay, we are at the end of our 40 minutes. This is what we're looking at now. I am the next step our next step in this process is to actually set a timer for 30 minutes keeping this at 100 degrees we're going to give it a stir every couple minutes just to make sure that it doesn't mat at the bottom or we're going to hold the curds at the 100 degrees for 30 minutes Okay, our 30 minutes is up where we've been stirring about, I don't know, four or five times in the whole 30 minutes I stirred. We are actually now going to be letting this sit undisturbed for 30 minutes. That's going to allow all of our curds to kind of make a big mass at the bottom. And then um, while this has 30 minutes, go ahead and sanitize and get your press and your cheesecloth sanitized and ready because after that we're going to be getting it in the press and pressing it. The way that I usually sanitize my press and my cheesecloth is to boil water in my kettle and I just pour this uh, boiling water over my press and my mold and my cheesecloth all at one time. Okay so I usually strain the like, whole amount of whey that I can get out into a five gallon bucket. Um, people <laughs> are uh, much more conservative than I am and will resourceful. will be more resourceful and make ricotta. 
with the way. I have a video on that. I can link in the in the cards up above. But as mom is tired, I think by now my other preg my pregnancy announcement has come out. I'm just done, and I usually am. I really can't use that baby as an excuse. I'm usually done by the time this is over in the kitchen. I want to get out of the kitchen before I have to make dinner. So I usually don't do anything except feed that to my roses or I will soak chicken feed in it and then feed that after it's fermented at least 24 hours to my chickens, which helps, you know, with the eggs and it um, takes our, our feed a little further. So now we are going to load up our press with these curds. So this is never a dainty process. I have my press with my mold and a cheesecloth. And then I'm going to start loading this up. The next time we do this cheese together, we're going to actually make it a pepper jack cheese with some pepper flakes or I have jalapenos from the garden last year that I froze. Um, but today we're just going to make this a plain Monterey Jack. That's what we call it if you do not put any pepper in it. Peppers or spice in it. But that is delicious also and I will, that will probably be one of my next videos on cheese making because when you have a cheese like this that is going to need to be in a salt brine. Once you have your salt brine and you're kind of using it, I like to just kind of get on a kick of using um, other cheeses that take the salt brine too. So a Gouda takes a salt brine. Um, cheddars do not. That's why I think cheddar is one of my best, my favorite um, in both flavor. I really like, I mean, there's none that I don't like, um, but I really like cheddars. And I like that you mix the salt in so you do not have to keep up with a salt brine for that. But I will show you how to make a salt brine. And we will have to, we will get to a point where we do that. So I will explain that as I go here. I'm very close to getting all my curds in here. The last little bit can be a snack for my kiddos. Okay. So I have my curds all in my press. I'm going to get it out my sink so you can see it a little better. I did sanitize all this, I showed you, with hot boiling water. We're going to press on firm pressure for one hour. So I'm going to take my cheesecloth and put it across the top of my curds. And then I will put my follower on. Now my mold and my follower, my follower came with the mold. Um, I got off New England Cheesemaking Company.com. And this is the large version, I believe this, it was. And it fits usually my five and six gallons uh, wheels pretty well. <clears throat> but my uh, press, I actually got off eBay. And someone was asking the other day, and I went online, and I, they're not selling it anymore. It was a, a, an actual person who was uh, just making these and selling them. They're, it's a very simple technique, I would think, to make this. It's not complicated. But I enjoy the spring um, presses because it has, gives you continual pressure. So I, I like these. It was not a big investment at the time and cheese presses can be a big investment and I'll probably eventually get a separate one just so sometimes I make a cheese well or I want to make a small cheese and a large cheese at the same time. I don't know. Sometimes I think I'd like a big another cheese press but right now that's not even that's not in the cards at all. So I get my cheesecloth at Walmart. This is just a kitchen towel, a flour sack kitchen towel. So for a spring-loaded, spring-loaded, yeah, a spring-loaded um, press like this to give it firm pressure, 
I'm going to make my spring as tight as I can and try to make it even. I never get it even. I'm pretty famous for not having an even press, but that's okay. I did get the drip tray, drip tray, this thing, off of New England Cheese Making Company too, and that made it really convenient so that I could set it on the side of my sink and have the way that presses out run into my sink so I didn't have to have another container to catch my way, or else you would have to put something like this in a, on top of something, I, I guess, like a cookie sheet or a roasting pan or something. But this works really good. I really like this setup. I even asked my husband if he would be willing to maybe um, start making these. They're very simple, and then we could sell them, but um, he's not into that right now, maybe in the future. He's got, his, he's got plenty to do right now. So we're going to let this set with firm pressure for one hour. And then when we come back, we're just going to flip it and put it on, <laughs> put it on firm pressure for overnight. Okay, it has actually been longer than an hour because I had to run an errand. So I'm going to go ahead and take our cheese out of the press and flip it. Then we are going to press it again on firm overnight. Let's get a good look at our real cheese. Looks pretty good so far. So, they say to redress it. It says that in directions. You are welcome to do that, meaning put a new cloth on it. I never take the time to do that. I don't know why it would make a difference. But I'm going to flip it. And try a little bit harder this time um, to not have any creases in your cloth. Now, creases aren't really my issue. <laughs> I have an issue with it being uneven, but I'm okay with that too. But um, this is your last pressing, so chance to get it right. Put the follower on. And Firm pressure again, and like I said, this will be for overnight. Now, while this is pressing overnight, you need to go ahead and make sure you have a salt brine. Sorry. Someone has a hula hoop. You need to have a salt brine ready that will fit this cheese into it, an 18% salt brine. So I usually do in these like little three or three gallon buckets. Um, I have this in our outside fridge. Um, the ratio is five parts water to one part salt. So five cups of water to one cup of salt. Uh, you need to have it warm enough just to dissolve, but whenever you are putting your cheese in it, it needs to be room temperature. So if you need to do that the night before to make it so it will be ready for the next day, or like for me, this is outside in the fridge. I have to pull it out and get it to room temperature before I can put my cheese in it the next day. So get that ready. This was actually for this three gallon bucket. I put 15 cups of water and three cups of salt. And I made this several months ago. So every now and then I will throw in another half a cup or so of salt as I've been using it just to refresh it and make sure it is totally saturated or at 18% saturation. So I'll bring you back tomorrow when we take this out of its press and into the salt brine. Okay, the next morning we are going to take this cheese out of its press and put it into our salt brine that we have ready for it. This is gonna brine for 12 hours. Uh, you do need to flip your cheese inside your brine halfway through, so six six hours. Just put it in in the morning um, at lunchtime, flip it, and then and in the evening around eight, nine, take it out, which is what I'm doing right here. And then we're going to air dry it on the counter for several days. I just invert a plate and set it on a plate and cover it with a towel. And then several times a day, I will flip that. 
Um, I let this actually sit for about four days. Uh, it's still pretty chilly here, so that worked good. And then I vacuum seal it. And then I age my cheese in the fridge for this Monterey Jack for two to three months.